Welcome back. And for tutorial number three, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the lighting, the rendering. We're going to add a uh, star field in 3D behind us to wrap around our universe. And we're going to add an asteroid belt. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is get rid of the default lighting that we have. It's really not doing much for us. As you can see from a render, you know, our sun is glowing and of course it's shining on the wrong side and all of that. So the well, first thing we want to do is create a light to work as our sun. So we're going to go to create lights point light. Now we have that set up and if you do a quick render you'll notice that the sun is now gone and we have a slight change. Well the first thing that I suggest you do while this is going to work that way is change your lighting in your panel to use all lights. This way you can see in the view what's happening and you can see in a quick render exactly how that's happening. And now if we jump ahead a little bit, um, you can stop here. You can actually see how the light is shining around the planets and getting a much more realistic effect than what we were getting before. Okay, so we're gonna wanna make sure that we've changed that. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna get ready to work in our particle system. So we need to change our render settings. So we're gonna select our render settings button here and we're going to change from the Maya software to Mental Ray. Okay, Mental Ray is a different uh, rendering engine that is inside of Maya. Um, for now we'll get deeper into that later on in the semester but for now just go ahead and switch it over. We're going to move down and we're going to change our image size from 640 by 480. Let's change it down to the HD 720. We like a much larger picture. Uh, give us a better view of what we're looking at. Um, our resolution will leave at 72, uh, depending on what we're going to do with it. We could go up to 300, but for right now, it's not really worth it for the what we're going to be doing. Also, change from the draft settings to production. Now, that'll give us a, a better quality render. Now, if you close and take another render, we'll get a much larger image, which, of course, takes more time. And you can see we've got our planets, but we still can't see the sun. Now, there's a couple ways that we can change this. If we select our sun, we can come into the texture that we have. And if we adjust the ambient color here, we should be able to get a better view of exactly what's going on with the sun. Now, that's okay. You know, we get the nice glow. We see how it's... Uh, shining around but it's really not a very good sun like texture so what i've done is i went onto creative crash and downloaded sun v1 version one um, and we're going to import it now and use that because it is a fantastic uh, fantastically designed shader that we're going to use so we're going to go to file import now notice it's in the data here i actually stored it earlier in the scenes. So we're going to go to Sun V1 and instead of we're going to do the Maya ASCII, we're going to select the Sun, we're going to click select open and notice we now have a new group that has come around here. We can actually delete this entire group because we're not going to use it. We're only going to use the texture that went along with it and we're going to right click on our Sun. Oh, let's come back and make sure we have it. Right click on our Sun Assign existing material, which we've just imported, called Sun version 1, which is a Fong. Okay. Now, with that imported, you're still not going to see anything different here. But once we render it, you'll notice a substantial difference. Notice how we start off with just that first casting where it comes across with the orange and we have our sunspots, right? And then we get the nice glow coming off. It's really, you know, epic looking. And now if we actually come in even closer, let's say for example, we come in and we look at Jupiter here and we scroll to the side, we can come over, we can see the front of Jupiter, get a nice image here and take a render you can see how the texture will change on the sun and look really, you know, nice and fluid and just the way that the sun is uh, in real life. And there's a pretty classic shot that we have right there, the sun with the planet. You know, we've got a nice roll off of the shadow here. We have another planet in the corner. 
and we can work with that. So we're just going to hold on to that shot for right now and keep moving. The next thing we're going to want to add is our star field to go around. Now, of course, we could just add dots in the background of this image, but to be honest, it's not as effective because say we change and we move, we want the image to move with us. Say we did an animation, say we had uh, those NASA models we spoke of flying through, you know, you can have that 3D effect with the stars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our first particle field. So I want you to follow along. There's gonna be a couple of things we're gonna need to tweak and change, but this is a pretty straightforward example of how a particle field works. So first thing we need to do is change to the Dynamics menu. After changing to the Dynamics menu, you're going to want to choose Particles, Create Emitter. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create an Emitter 1 and a Particle 1. And we need to make sure we have Emitter 1 selected. <clears throat> and come over and tweak a few of the settings. We want to change the rate here to 500. We're going to want to change the minimum distance to outside of where Pluto was. So if you remember back, Pluto was around 600. It was, I think it was 524. So what we want to do is put this outside of that. So for, for our purposes, I'm going to say 1,000. And then we'll set the max distance at 1,200, which will give us a nice buffer for the 3D It'll give us a little bit of depth, but not too much. We don't need it to go out too far. We don't need to be rendering particles all the way through. So that should give us a nice 3D uh, image that we're looking for as we move around. We also are going to need to change the speed. Our speed down here in the basic emission, we're going to change it to zero. What we're looking for is particles that stay in one spot. We're not looking for particles that are going to be moving, um, which they do normally are used for. So we're going to change that to zero. All right, and then we're going to rewind and play back from the beginning. Now, if you notice, as we're going along, here are our particles starting to form in the background. And you're going to want to let this run for a little bit. I like to let it run, get a good view if I have a nice image down here. Um, we can stop. We can just hit escape and stop. And that is about what we're looking for. Now, if we don't like this, we can always rewind and do it again. The emitter will continue to emit particles only from the beginning. Now, if you jump to a different frame, it's not gonna continue to emit. So you have to do it from the beginning every time. So I'm gonna let this roll probably, I think that's about good, right about to about 400 frames. And that gives us a good collection of stars to work with. Now, we're actually gonna freeze these stars in place and use them. Um, the particle emitter is really just using it to spread it out and create it for us so we're not placing each one of these by hand. Okay, so we have our particle selected. We move to particle one. We go to solvers, initial state, and set for selected. Now that that is done, we can actually delete our emitter one. We've emitted we have no more need for it because everything we have is already in place. In our particle one, we change over to our channel box and we change our is dynamic from on to off. We type off by typing zero, um, on would be one. Okay, we want to come back into our attribute editor and we're going to tweak some of these settings to set the shape. So we're going to select particle shape one scroll down and change our render type from points to spheres and click current render type. Now notice our radius will come up. We have the ability to change the radius of these stars. Now we don't want anything too large but if we make it too small we won't see it. So a good starting point would be one and depending on the distance that we have it should give us a quality look um, without going overboard and we can adjust this afterwards so we need to check that out and then we come down further and we change that to spheres we go to the point five we want to oh we want to set the color was the next part I'm sorry come to Lambert 
We're going to change this. We're going to create a new material for our particles. Right click, assign new material, because once again, the Lambert one is still assigned to Neptune. We're going to select our color. Stars really kind of vary. Um, I personally like it to have a little bit of blue to it. Um, keep it brighter, something like that. A little yellow would work as well, just as well. So I'm going to go with the blue this time. Uh, you can go with the yellow, do it as you need to. And then we're going to change our special effects to, we're going to start with a 0 0.05 and maybe come up higher than that. Actually, we might start with a 5, just to give you an example of what that's going to look like and let you see. And then from there, we can just hit render. And you can see our stars are already being picked up, so we've picked a good size for that. And now we'll see if the glow is good on the second time through. See, now we have a nice subtle glow. We don't have too much. Um, we could actually back that down a little bit. That's a little strong for my taste. Um, and if you change the size, these would be much larger. Um, so going a little bit more, I would actually back this down. I'd come down probably to 0.25. And give that another shot. And there you have a nice glow. It's subtle, which is what you really look at. When you look up at the stars, you don't see, you know, the glow and the twinkle unless there's like a really dense fog. Okay. 